you can notice the change how the breath starts going becoming longer and deeper and regular feel really good when i go out to volunteer i meet so many people and uh, they really look forward for my visits also it's not that they give me back whenever i go there they they have the warm welcome they give me i would advise that uh, all the people should uh, join volunteer mbc and then make a profile in that organization and in this this way the uh, staff can uh, find a nice suitable position for you to volunteer and in this way you give back to the community right <laughs> Volunteer MBC is doing a great job, and it matches all the volunteers with whatever interest they have, or any age, any senior person, or whatever uh, they want to do, they can uh, find some place for them to volunteer. Exhale. My name is Tejul Dhawar, and this is my volunteer story. Thank you. Welcome back to our last segment of I Care, I Volunteer. I'm here still with Karina Phillip and Ziva. Now, are there any other organizations that are involved with you guys as well? And what are their roles? Yes, yeah, so we have uh, a few other ones, um, some local and some uh, one of, one of uh, the organizations, uh, Caledon Community Services, is based in Caledon. Um, and then we have uh, an organization from Barrie. Um, who, you know, perhaps, Philip, you can talk a little bit more about the Gilbert sure. the organization. Yeah, Yeah. so we work as well with the Gilbert Center uh, out of Barrie, so they cover Simcoe County and Muskoka District. And uh, they're an organization not unlike ours that uh, developed originally as an HIV organization, but over time expanded their mandate, as we are doing, to include more LGBT work. So uh, they, they are seeing a lot more involvement of LGBT volunteers in their organization. And, uh, and so they'll benefit from some of the best practice in volunteer management aspects of this project. Um, and they'll contribute their expertise and insights around uh, how to create equitable, inclusive LGBT spaces. Um, and then the, the other partner is Rainbow Health Ontario. So Rainbow Health Ontario is a program of Sherburne Health Center in uh, Toronto. And it's a provincial organization that looks at uh, LGBT healthcare issues. So a lot of what they do is training across the province, provide policy education around LGBT health issues. Um, but they work with a lot of organizations that are looking to enhance LGBT uh, health and well-being, and uh, as a result, um, have a lot of opportunity to, with them, uh, roll some of this out across the province. Now, do you guys have any future projects that you guys are looking forward to to help include the community as well? Mm -hmm. uh, we're working on some other projects. So um, we were also just recently funded by the region of Peel to um, to organize an LGBT collaborative. So what that is is a, a leadership table in Peel that brings together organizations that have an interest in looking at LGBT inclusion broadly. So not just around LG uh, volunteer inclusion, but LGBT inclusion 
in terms of the services that they, they deliver, in terms of uh, the support for staff uh, in, their, in their workplaces, but also to provide a champion and a leadership voice in Peel around LGBT issues. So that's a project that we are also partners in, along mm -hmm. with um, a number of other organizations in Peel. And then, uh, if I can just put a little plug, on May 17th, we also have an International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia Breakfast that we'll be having, which is to invite leaders in the community together to look at how they can contribute to or continue to contribute to LGBT inclusion, in, in, inclusion in the region. Perfect. Are there any other events that we can look forward to coming up that maybe people can start getting involved in? Well, our hope is definitely that uh, the, the new volunteers that haven't been in, engaged from the LGBTQ community will take part in our Peel Cares, uh, in our Canada 150 Peel Cares campaign to really demonstrate, um, you know, the involvement that and the volunteering that they do throughout uh, 2017, and then they will absolutely be part of the big celebration during International Volunteer Day. And that's Which is on December the 5th, 5th right? right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what should we expect once this project is over? Well, I think we should expect that, uh, you know, LGBT folks in Peel feel a lot safer, a lot more comfortable, mm -hmm. uh, and Absolutely. welcome to contribute to Peel culture and society. Mm -hmm. I think what we hear far too often is that LGBT folks in the region go to Toronto or to other areas to volunteer. And so I think, uh, as Queen was saying, it's, it's a bit of a resource drain because there's talent, skills, and experience. Absolutely. And that is dra being drained into Toronto and to other places where people feel welcome. So I think what we hope to see then is people to actually bring that back home and use it here in their own communities, not only for the benefit of LGBT communities, obviously, but for, the, I think, the entire community of Peel. Uh, and as a demonstration of, I think, Peel's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Anything else to add there? Kim? No, I, th I think that uh, that sums it up very nicely. Um, it, you know, it's, it's all about inclusion and uh, you know trying to get rid of those barriers. And um, especially because we have some of the organizations involved that are more rural, um, that brings a whole other aspect, which um, often they're even more um, disadvantaged uh, when it when it comes to you know the further you get away from Peel either, or even in Peel and Caledon is like a whole other uh, world basically so that's where the organization in Barrie can definitely yeah. bring that l a rural perspective. But I think if I could just add the end game of course is you know more services more programs mer more opportunities as well for LGBT communities to get what other people in the region are already getting so that's things like access to mental health care, access to um, you know, recreational activities, so feeling like you can be part of sports teams in Peel and be out, um, that you can contribute as a member uh, in some of the uh, service clubs, etc., and be out, um, and to really see, I think, the needs of the LGBT community being met by organizations that have expanded their capacity through LGBT volunteers to actually address the needs of LGBT communities in the region so it's uh, you know what we see far too often is people saying well okay you're you're gay you have a mental health issue go to Toronto right or you're 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 a lesbian and you're looking for a doctor go to Toronto right or you're trans and you want a food bank go to Toronto mm -hmm. and I think what we have to be able to shift is like these are these are people that live in Peel right we belong here we live here and uh, it's about saying that we uh, we we can actually get get access to those things here in Peel so it's both contributing and it's receiving the benefits of uh, the systems in Peel. Do you have anything else to add quickly before we go? Um, well, I mean, well, what I'm saying is that, um, what I, I mean, like they, they talk everything yeah. about it, but what I, what I hope is like actually also to be, like the LGBTQ uh, ward is a very broad um, yeah. umbrella and the services that can hope that be including cultural backgrounds and and um, mm -hmm. and as a newcomer uh, also I would say that you know like but like you know not just in Peel and everywhere that you know start like caring about newcomer LGBT people that Perfect. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah all right I want to thank both I want to thank Kareen Philip and Ziva for joining us today on I Care I Volunteer. Stay tuned next week for our next episode. Have a great night.